Privislavitz. Not only is it hard to say, it's hard to rebuild. Requiring over 100,000 groschen to complete, this is a challenge in its own right. But what if we made it even harder? There was a total of over 40 hours put into this game dedicated to the sole conquest of completing just this, and that's only counting the hours I have recorded. Plenty of time during this playthrough I had to spend off record replaying or backtracking through certain instances, while other times were spent sitting alone in a prison cell, but I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let's back up a bit and start where all good stories begin, at the beginning. But first let's establish some rules and the target of today's challenge. The goal to consider this run as finished is to completely rebuild Privislavitz with funding only from quests and quest rewards. Why am I doing this again? Because I'm a masochist. Oh, and I'm also playing on hardcore with all negative perks, which is really why this challenge took so long. You never know what you got till it's gone, and in my case, it was fast travel. Alright, so let's establish some rules. Well, to make this challenge all the more painful, I'm required to hunt all the food I eat, craft all the potions I'll be using, and repair any and all equipment myself via grindstones and repair kits. I'm also not allowed to loot anything unless it's tied to the quest in some way. An early example of this would be the chest during the quest, The Prey, where you hunt with Han's cape on. The only items I can sell are those granted via quests, and this includes the items I mentioned in the previous rule. Ancient maps, although not technically a quest, are included since they're free with the DLC and I'm going to take every advantage I can get here, though I think I only used one early on so I'm adding these so y'all don't get mad when you see it. And that's just it, just four-ish rules to follow. But honestly, these guidelines make for a very interesting and incredibly challenging experience, and I wouldn't recommend this for anyone. So, without further ado, let's get this bitch started. Scallets. You all know this place, some of you probably far more than you'd like to. It's where our story of Henry begins and the story of his parents end. And what better way to start than with a bug? Yep. For whatever reason, when I skip past the opening cutscene, 7 out of 10 times my first dialogue option when speaking to mother is invisible which forces my first free level to be spent on speech. Not a great start. Fortunately, I'm able to scroll down to strength for the next free level, grab all the stuff out of our personal chest, and head out the door to begin our journey. Henry is starving already, and cooking pots don't offer much sustenance in hardcore mode, so we eat what we can and carry on with the prologue. First talking to father, then heading up to the castle to grab the sword's crossguard. From here, there's a couple of things I wanted to accomplish before leaving Scallets, and obtaining the leg day perk was one of them. Since I'll be crafting my own potions, I might as well train up strength while grabbing my ingredients. You also may notice that I don't have an animation to pick up herbs, and that's because I have a mod installed since I've seen that cutscene over 10,000 times and needed it to keep me sane through the rest of this challenge. Anyway, it's pretty easy to get to level 10 herbalism in this area, and with these herbs I'm now able to buy charcoal and the ale for father, choosing not to throw shit at Deutsch's house, nor fighting Kunesh, nor steal the items back. I'm not sure how I progressed without doing this, I thought it was mandatory, but I never ended up grabbing them. And the last thing I did before going back to father was train with Vanyak and learn the basics of sword fighting. Unfortunately, I waited too long and the ale got warm, so I got sent back to get a fresh pitcher. Anyway, we start forging, then get interrupted by Teresa wanting nails that were promised to her father, and then get caught staring at her ass as she walks away. Soon after completing the sword, we watch our hometown as it was raided, mass murdered, and burned to the ground. Running was our only option, so that's what we did, like the coward we are. We rode off to the safety of Townberg by stealing a horse from the stables and bolting as fast as we could. In Townberg, there's not much to do other than sleep, watch guard for a little bit, and some more story building but ultimately nothing of particular interest for this run. Robard wouldn't let us leave to go bury my parents, and to that I said, fuck you, I'm hopping out of this moat and sprinting my ass out of here. None of these quests so far are earning me any money, and I needed to start making it quick, so I'm rushing the hell out of this area to finally turn up and retire after getting my ass kicked and sword stolen by cunt. <clears throat> Runt. Anyway, now that we're in Ratai, we can finally begin our expedition. In Ratai, everyone knows that the first thing you want to do every time is rush to Bernard and begin training with him to eventually learn Master Strokes. I failed to do this. I was far more focused on obtaining a horse and some weapons because at this point, I was starving and tired and I needed to hunt. Before doing so, I run through the quest of the Nightingale and acquire my first official set of armor, if you could call it that. Then go pick a fight with Hans Capon. And at this point, I'm super tired because I missed my first window to meet up with the Nightingale and had to wait almost 24 hours. This becomes important for the next quest, The Prey. In this quest, as you all know, you gotta run next to Capon while he's riding in the woods on his horse. Henry was so tired, he fell asleep in the middle of the road on his way there. 
He was running on E much of the time up until now and had finally hit his tipping point. I woke up and eventually hobbled my way back to my camp and took all the items afforded to me in the designated chest. There was some food, arrows, a bow, and a sew. This loadout and I were about to get real familiar. Still extremely tired, I decided to take a nice little rest at camp and when I woke up I was reminded again of the negative perks, one of which was sleepwalking. I woke up in the dark and more lost than ever. Not really knowing the lay of the lands quite yet and not showing up on the map made this a challenge in its own right. I deduced I was in Ushits and had no clue which path to take, plus it was dark as shit, adding to the difficulty. After a while, I finally made my way back to camp and took Hans's bacon and wine for myself and slept the rest of the night. The next morning, Hans challenges us to a hunting competition to which we agree to. I thought I had killed enough bunnies in this part, but apparently we both did abysmal. Oh well, at least I now have food. The rest of the quest played out as usual. Hans tries to kill a boar, successfully fails, then runs off to find it without us, leaving us to find him captured by a couple of dirty bandits. We triumphantly defeat them, the second time, and finally gain some respect with that little brat capon. Now there's two ways to look at my current situation. On one hand, I now have a sword, bow, and a horse, and on the other, I'm now locked into doing the fucking ginger quest with Bernard before I'm able to train again. I should have done this before starting anything. Oh well, the more you know. Before setting off down this shit ass quest line, I head back to Ratai and begin the quest next to Godliness, where Hans Capon wants me to run around completing some errands for him, getting wine, then some flowers, and then beating up his bully. In the end, he grants me with 5 installments of 55 Groschen, bringing our total up to 385. After finishing this quest, I realized I had no potions or schnapps left, so I set off to pick some herbs and do a bit of alchemy. I then blazed through the quest Ginger in a Pickle as quickly as I possibly could to get Bernard back to Ratai and I don't recall how much, if any, I made from the quest, I was more focused on getting my trainer back. Oh, it was none? Great. Except for the part of the windmill, when looking for Timmy, I did swindle the bandits out of 150 Groschen before killing them all on a pile of wood, and I guess the other 200 I did get from Radzig for my good detective work. Once I finished that quest and got Bernard back, I trained up until I could learn Master Strokes and accept the quest he now has for me. Ruin. This is a multi-part quest that centers around killing bandit camps around Ratai. With our first camp on the map, we made our way to the designated location and did our best to take them out from a distance with a bow. It was unsuccessful. One, two, three times until I finally found my groove and wiped out the camp. I then collected the leader's helmet and any dead crony's ears for proof of my work, totaling us up to 895 Groschen. My next move was to collect and do as many Ratai based quests as possible, as I now had a faster mode of travel. A brief talk with Milan led me to fight Steven and Ringlet for a grand total of 4 Groschen. I was feeling good about these fights and thought Milan would be a breeze after demolishing the former too. I was mistaken. He came at me like a raging bull and put me in my place. I began to then understand these fights weren't going to earn me shit and quickly moved on, losing the 4 Groschen in the process. I turned in my quest with Bernard and got intel on the second camp in the area. I had also heard that the Huntsman and Ratai had some work for me finding some birds that sounded like subscribe to the Sweaty Vetter YouTube channel, so I tell him I'll do it. Before setting off for the Vranic Forest, I start and complete the quest, The Good Thief, for Peshik, so I no longer owe him anything. He tells me to go visit Wojciech, but I forgo that for now to focus on completing the quests in this area. The Nightingales and the Bandit Camps are in the same area, so I'd obviously do these at the same time. Unfortunately for me, these bandits were in higher numbers than the last camp and overwhelmed me on multiple occasions. This was until I found an area that allowed me to fight them one at a time, making this camp a walk in the park. This won't be the last time I abuse the mechanics of this game to defeat these camps. I don't have any armor at this point, so I really have to pick my battles wisely and use any exploits I can find. This would change slightly when I stumbled upon the chest location of one of the ancient maps. In here, I found some fashionable slippers, 38.9 Groschen, a heavy warhammer, light brigantine, lullaby potion recipe, a silver ring, warhorse helmet, and warhorse shoes. Honestly, not the best haul, but it's more than I had before, so I'll take it. And that was the last map I used for the rest of the run. Don't hate me, I was desperate. Anyway, I placed the rest of the traps and waited an hour or so so I could go pick them all back up, return to the huntsman and collect my 40 ordinary arrows and 150 Groschen. I also then bought some more arrows for 60 Groschen, but gained it back when I turned in my second Ruin quest, setting our total purse at 1198.9 Groschen. This was the end of page 1 in my 11 pages of notes on this fucking run. I'll try not to take too much more time explaining the rest, I just wanted to get the baseline down on how I got the ball rolling, because from here on out it's a ton, and I mean a ton, of quest grinding. 
I did very minimal planning when starting this challenge, which really ends up screwing me slightly down the road, but there I go, getting ahead of myself again. Let's continue this journey now that we've had a bit of a breather. So there we were, back in Ratai, turning in the Huntsman quest as well as the second Ruin quest, only to get another. But this one, fortunately, was the easiest of them all. Now, I know this is a bitch move, but as you recall, I don't have shit for armor and this proved to be the best way. After getting back into town, I sold the fashionable shoes and Henry's red scarf and bought a small tailor's kit that I never used. At this point, it was becoming clear to me that I was going to need a bunch of savior schnapps and marigold decoctions, especially when I'm basically fighting naked. So I do the one thing I despise doing in this motherfucking game, alchemy. Once I felt secure in my hall, I turned in the third ruin quest, all for him to give me one more. <sighs> okay, well, at least these quests give me the best early game money, so I guess I can't complain. Plus, it gives me the opportunity to level up various combat skills. Mostly bow, but fuck off, this is my challenge. On my way out of town, I stop by and give Wojciech the copper ring and start his Thick as Thieves quest to steal five Waffen Rocks from Talmberg. I then locate the next camp and find out pretty quickly that these fuckers have a dog. Literally my worst nightmare. These things are ass to kill, especially with a group of four guys trying to gangbang you while you're stuck staring at the ground. No matter, I eventually kill them, take their ears, and make my way back to Ratai. At this point, I'm pissed and ready to take my anger out on someone. Then, of all people, Milan walks past me, looking fucking smug as always, still reveling in his win against me. Unfortunately for him, I'm stronger now. I challenge him to a fight once again and pummel his ass into the grass. Win barely any Groshen, but the satisfaction was worth it. I saddled up and rode off to Townburg since that's where the next set of quests would take me. Upon arriving, I knocked out the guard for the key to the Waffen Rocks and steal those. Then I take a nice sleep till daylight and talk to Lady Stephanie, starting the quest at your service, my lady, and acquiring 125 Groshen. Galloping my way back to Wojciech, I came across the inn in the glaze and meet a woman by the name Old Whore. She tasked me with a few different things from retrieving some money she's owed to stealing a dagger, then a key, all with the promise of a reward. This ends up being completely false and she was just using me as a pawn in her plan to murder her ex or something. Well, that was a waste of time. Continuing forward, I give the Waffen Rocks to Wojciech, all for him to give me yet another quest. He wants me to steal a horse from Merhoyed. <laughs> this was easy. I'll just waltz over to their stable, hop on the first horse I see, and piece the fuck out of there for my reward. Easy, easy. From here, I started planning out these quests a bit more after my run-in with the old whore. I don't want to get duped into doing some shit for free again. I hate wasting time. So I did some research, and I found many quests in this game are unlocked through completion of other quests, many of these being story quests. This information leads me to Sasau. Here in Sasau, we gotta pick up the crown for Lady Stephanie, scout out a blacksmith who apparently does witchcraft, and then talk to our old friends Fritz and Matthew, who need jobs after the raid in Scallets. We tell our boys we'll keep an ear out and find out the blacksmith just sings a song that helps him time out specific tasks. Perfect, we have our recipe for the blacksmith and Ladechko, our crown for Stephanie, and a miller that needs workers. So off we go to complete and advance our three current quests. I also decided to do some quests within the monastery, but found out quickly that none of them earn money except for weeds. And actually, one of them ended up costing me money. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. Oh, and also, I tried my best to batch all these quests so I didn't have to run around back and forth since I didn't have fast travel, which also took a little bit of planning. Either way, I went back to Ladechko to tell the blacksmith what I knew and secure some work at the mill for my boys. Ladechko is just a short ride to Ratai, which has Lady Stephanie's wine. It's a prize in an archery contest that I catastrophically failed. Luckily, I have the gift of a silver tongue and talked him into giving it to me. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> no, of course. I name dropped. Are you fucking kidding? Back to Sasau, I went to grab the quest Queen Sheba's sword and tell Matthew and Fritz about their new job opportunity. They said they'd pay me back, and I was counting on it. Scallops is just over a three minute ride from Sasau, so I head up there to search for a treasure Kunesh told me about when I found him in Ratai. He said it was buried under the old dovecot, and sure as shit, it was there, containing 50 Groshen and Baron's cup. So far, I've earned 2,476.4 Groshen, and I'm a long way from my goal. My only close to finished quest at this point was for Lady Stephanie, and that brought me to Ushitz to pick up a horse. Meeting the stable hand, he said they lost a horse of their own, but not the one I'm looking for. However, the one I needed was a pain to ride and would buck anyone off except for Veshek. Apparently, it just likes being sung to. And since I was here, I thought I'd help them find their horse before riding back to Talmberg, they only gave me 65 Groshen for my help, but it was better than what I got from Stephanie. A fucking shirt. While I was in Townburg, I touched base with Robard about the camp that I'd cleared, and he gave me 480 for my troubles. Not bad. I tried to take out another camp, but died almost instantly, so I saved it for later. 
Instead, against the wiki's caution, I started House of God. The potential money for this quest was just too good to be true. I should have listened. Now fuming, I ride through the woods to Privislavas to clear my head and scout out the premises to collect intel for Radzik. Not thinking it through, I decided it would be a good idea to proceed with Baptism of Fire with no armor and my starter so. This was a dumb mistake that cost me several, several hours. I made it pretty far a couple of times, and other times I just had the absolute worst luck imaginable. <laughs> I just really wasn't prepared. As I sat there wallowing in my defeat, I thought the game was trying to tell me something. Up popped the quest for the Ratai tournament. And then it hit me. This was my golden ticket. It couldn't be more obvious. I jumped on pebbles and rode at lightning speeds to Ratai, and I made it there with time to spare so I could place a bet with Peshek, sold some things off to the apothecary, started Aquarius, then headed to the tournament ring. After dominating the competition, the second half of a friend in need popped up, and it was time to collect from my friends. But before riding off, I collect my gauntlets and 400 Groucian from Hanush and my other 500 from Peshek. As I'm about to leave, I noticed a wire set up across the road. What asshole would do something like this? Oh right, that asshole. Honestly though, I don't see what the big deal about Black Peter is. He seemed pretty easy to me. I get back on my horse to settle my friend's debts in Ladeshko and head north to Samopesh to claim my reward from the blacksmith for killing Black Peter. Now I have a grand total of 3800 in my name, and we're almost a fifth of the way there. But wait, sweaty, don't you need over 100,000 Groshen? 4,000 is not even close to a fifth of that. And I hear you, and you're correct, dear watcher. I meant a fifth of the way to my first goal, making Privislavitz profitable. Let me break it down for you. To make it bare minimum profitable, I was going to need 2,500 for the woodcutters, 4,000 for a bridge, 4,000 for a trader, 220 for charcoal, 80 for grain, and 10,000 for a forge with swordsmith upgrades. So a total of 20,800 groschen for a grand total profit of 230 per day, increasing to 370 after convincing Cornelius and Fink to join me. Alright, so we're just under a fifth of the way to my first goal, and I'm about 17 hours into this challenge. Ah, oh, fuck. This is not the pace I was hoping for. So, I took another break to research into a more profitable prib. I also briefly searched to find the best quests and side quests that would earn me the most money, and I came up with quite a bit, as long as the wiki is correct. Time to get back to work. I traveled to Ratai once again to sell off some of my undesirables, then talked to Hanush to start the quest, Veldensians. Since I was back in town, I also reported to Hans that I won the tourney and he gave me an extra 100 Groschen. I as well worked on completing Aquarius while making sure to talk to Teresa about giving her friends work so I could make another 100 off her later. In the middle of this quest, I noticed I was, once again, low on schnapps, so I worked a bit more on alchemy. Then I headed over to Bernard to give him a single rotted bandit ear I'd had in my pocket for who knows how long. After that, I somehow squirreled myself into a quest to find a human captive's treasure. Neither me nor his captors spoke Hungarian, so I had to go find a man. They exchanged some words, and I convinced my hired hand to tell me the whole truth. He was going to lead me to a trap, but I gave that motherfucker the what for, and he led me to his hidden stump chest, which contained 800 Groschen, two schnapps, and an antidote. Pushing for further coin, I also took the cumin to the jail in Ratai and collected 100 from the bailiff. While here, I also wrapped up Aquarius by assigning everyone a job, giving everyone who gave the best reward the best job. Reporting back to the bailiff, I received 85 for the completion, and that brings me up to 5,300 Groschen. Quests just must fly in the wind of this game because I kept catching him through it. The innkeeper told me the executioner was dealing with a grieving widow of a man he just decapitated, so I headed off to help. After a brief chat, I found out that she had nowhere to go and the mission was to find her a home. Her husband had family close by, so I went to check to see with them if they would take her in. These people were the absolute worst and will only take her for a bribe. There goes 61 harder and Groschen. It doesn't matter, because you convince them both that the best place for her to stay would be with the Executioner, regardless of the stigma. She actually happily obliges, and the Executioner gives you 150 Groschen, because you basically just got him laid. Once again, I try to attempt Baptism of Fire, and actually manage to make it all the way to Kun with a little help from Radzik's army. But I still have shit for armor, so this doesn't go well at all. Once again, I rage quit that quest to push to a later date to start hunting humans again. I cleared the next camp near Ujits, and while here I decided to meet up with the vicar and see what he wants from me so I can get him to leave. He's here because he caught wind of some heretics in the area and was looking for more information on him. After some detective work in the woods, all clues pointed to the Bowers, who live on the outskirts of town. I headed over there in the middle of the night for further investigation and find out they're worshipping on some weird shit. 
I quickly take this info back to the vicar to get my reward and bounce the fuck out of there. At this point, we've graduated to having six grand in our pocket. Not bad. Not bad at all. But still a long way to go. On my way back to Ratai, I get distracted by Zora and Neuhoff who wants me to race her horse in Talmberg to convince Divish to buy from her. Business hasn't been so hot since the Fire Nation attacked and this sale could really help them out. I oblige and race my face off with a massive shortcut near the end of the race. I easily take first and share the good news with Zora, receiving some cash and a noble saddle in return. Finally making it back to Ratai, I report to Hanush and get my first real sword, St. Michael's sword. After all this traveling, I'd also eaten all my food reserves, so it was time to go hunting again. I bag a roe deer and a bunny, and that meat alone will last us the rest of the run because I'm a fucking human dustbin. And now that I'm all satiated, it's time for some easy money. Back to the tournaments we go. Being sure to bet with Peshek before each tournament, I win four more times netting 900 in Groshen each time, and finally putting together a decent set of Lords of Lipa armor. Now I was ready for Baptism of Fire. Things were looking ultra good this time around. Even the NPC army was doing pretty well. Through it all, I finally reached Cunt with an R one more time and thank god this was the last. That son of a bitch was finally dead and Privislavitz was vacant yet again. After the events had settled, I journeyed over to Townberg to ask Divish what his plans were for the town. He informs us that he sent a locator there a while ago but hadn't heard from him since. I offered to go see what happened, so I mounted my horse and sped off for Prib once again. To no one's surprise, his locator was captured by a group of bandits that I systematically took out like a medieval Agent 47. And after freeing the imbecile, I decided to accompany him on his quest to survey the land so he didn't get ganked again. Fortunately, things went smoothly this time and we were able to lay our claim. Sir Divish then had to take a trip out to join us after the coast was clear, and I convinced him I had to pay a fee to get his locator free. Guess he didn't see the dead bandits on his way in. At this point I've banked just shy of 10k and I'm already 9 pages into my script and feel this video is going on way too long already, so let's just speed things up a little and rapid fire our path to 20,800 Groshen. Okay, let's go. First I went to Merhoyed to secure some answers from the sick bandit, then brought him to jail, then completed and turned in all the raiders quests to Captain Robart. From there I began the interlopers quest line with the Sasal custodian, then investigated the fake silver circulating around Ravna. Beat up and question the mystery knight I found there about the silver, find out we're on the same team, got into Kuno's crew by beating his dude in a duel, started and finished clothes make a man with Hans Capon, filled in Tobias on the fake silver epidemic and pressed him for all the extra money options, started and completed Robber Baron, started and completed Game of Throws by sneaking in and stealing Capon's necklace back, started and completed Honeyed Words for Hans Capon, I then ran into an issue furthering Hans's quest line along with not comprehending the book in Privislavitz, I needed to learn how to read so I finally had to use it and learn. I then started and completed Money for Old Rope with the Executioner, sold a few quest items like potion recipes and such, and at this point I have 17k and can see that there's an end in sight. I ended up grinding out the rest of the tournament a few more times before heading off to Scalit's Mines to take care of the rest of the King's Silver. I also did Man of the Cloth at some point but didn't put it in my notes so I'm not entirely sure when. One of the last things I did was go back to Ratai and grind out the rest of the money by repeating the tournament over and over and over again. And in the final push to my goal, I sold all the rest of my armor and quest rewards and ventured back to Privislavitz and finally begun rebuilding. I also brewed up a bard potion to ensure I kept the locator's salary low, then began the process, starting with the woodcutter's camp, then the bridge, then the trader, then sought out some charcoal near Sasau and grain and Samapesh, and after obtaining the charcoal, I was able to build a forge, then upgrade it to a swordsmith like I had planned. Then I convinced Fink and Cornelius to join me, and then finally made a judgment to allow poachers to poach bringing daily net income to 400 Groshen a day. And now what? Well, since we're profitable, and this quest isn't technically complete, any profits count as quest rewards, right? Sure, but what good does 400 Groshen a day do? Does that mean we just sit here and wait and sleep and wait and sleep and wait and sleep and wait and sleep until we have enough? Fuck no. What about the Ratai tournaments? After completing each tournament, you're allowed to skip to the next one for 120 Groshen. Maybe that will count as 7 days or so with each skip since the tournaments happen weekly, right? Well, no. As it turns out, each skip only counts as 1 day, not 7. Well, shit. <laughs> this is going to take forever. I need 74,000 more Groshen to completely finish this quest and I'm not making it very fast. But then it hit me. There is a system in this game that allows you to skip days with little to no ramifications. Jail. Yeah, jail's the key to success. It's kind of a weird statement to make, but it's true. If you swing your sword at a guard and have no money to pay, it's automatically 10 days in jail. But 400 Groshen a day, that's still 185 days in jail. 
Surely there's a way to speed this up. Absolutely! I'm glad you asked, but it's going to cost another 8,860 groschen to complete, or 22.15 days in jail. So, as planned, we intentionally send ourselves to jail for 30 days for good measure and head back to Privislavis to grab our hard-earned coin. I then wandered over to Townberg and bought some stone for 3,000 groschen, then build the tavern and fully upgrade it, the bakery and fully upgrade it, and the beehives to give both the tavern and bakery more profit, and lastly bought some fully upgraded stables. After all is said and done, we stood to benefit 2,270 daily groschen, the most profitable you can ever be with Privislavitz. Now, all we gotta do is wait out a few more days in jail and put the final touches on both the church and the rot house. But, <laughs> why stop there? We're making some serious dough here. This shouldn't be squandered. Once we decide to build both these buildings, our net income goes down and the quest is completed. As it stands, each 10-day trip to jail earns us 22,700 groschen. That's a hefty chunk of change. So then I got to thinking, can we make a million groschen just by sitting in a jail cell? So I did some math. 1 million divided by 22,700 was 44.05. This meant Henry just had to sit in jail for 440.5 days and he could be a millionaire when he gets out. Not a bad deal at all, so he takes it. Each 10 days in jail takes about 2 minutes IRL to complete, so I literally spent 88 minutes of my time straight up waiting for a 10 day timer to count down over and over and over again. Those who say this wasn't hard work, fuck you. Just kidding, just kidding. So after all this time and effort, we finally get to fully rebuild Privislavitz and manage to become a millionaire in a completely unique way. Not that it matters, but it was still a fun addition to the challenge. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to check out all my others as well as subscribe and like the video, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.